you know, there are people saying deflation will return and it's been a deflationary world and so forth. So I think it's going to take, you know, a little bit more of beating investors over the head. And so when, when we think about, you know, what we need to, to get gold kickstarted again, kind of, <laughs> could, could we need, you know, not necessarily just another stimulus package, but maybe another fear trade moment to build that momentum again? I think that'll help. I mean, I, you know, probably the best thing we need is to, you know, get the, the BIS and all the bullion banks out of the game. I mean, it's, it's so heavily manipulated, but, but yes, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a matter of a number of things. I mean, I think, I think people need to, you know, there was a survey that said that it, it was, it's out of date now, but it was four months ago. It said that 70% of the people think that inflation is transitory. Well, that's going to, I think that's going to dissolve. I mean, I think people are going to, you know, finally with all these supply chain things and, you know, transitory is a few months, you know, this is, we're going to be into years and years of deflation here, and it could arguably be getting worse throughout that period. So as transitory dissolves into permanent inflation, that's going to really change investor sentiment a lot. And people are going to say to themselves, oh my, I've got to, I've got to protect myself against the debasement of my purchasing power. And so, you know, some will go to stocks and, and stocks represent somewhat of protection because they are an enterprise that can reprice and so forth. But but a lot of them will also go to, you know, the, the thing they'll get out of, the worst asset obviously will be bonds. So they'll get out of bonds and that might force the Fed into yield curve control, but then they'll run into, you know, hard assets. And actually you're kind of seeing that in the housing. I mean, I, I think it's fascinating that U.S. housing prices are up 23%. I mean, it's not because we have a shortage of housing. You know, that's that was bigger than the housing bubble. And one year on year growth at 20%. Well, I know what that is. That's, that's just housing guys doing the Hugo Stennis trade where they're, you know, you can, okay, you know, a house is something, it's one, it's something you can use. Two, it's something that theoretically protects against inflation. I mean, it does have taxes and it depreciates over time, but, but, you know, in general, a house is a real thing. It's not a bond. And, you know, and three, you can buy it cheap. I mean, the government will give you 30 year money at 3%. So if inflation is really running at seven or 8%, so the value of your house is going to go up, you know, well, this year housing prices inflation went up 23%, right? Mm -hmm. And you can borrow money at three to do that for a 30 year window. That's like a no brainer. That's just a complete no brainer. So you're seeing it there, you know, and, um, you know, it, it's, it's a combination of factors. Tom. I mean, it's just, I think it's just a matter of time and investor psychology changing. And to me, this period in the gold price reminds me a lot of the period around 2008, where, you know, 2007 or eight, it kind of hit the old high of $800, which was an old high from 1979, 80. And, um, we had the high got the old high from 2011 was 1900. Uh, we hit that and beat it slightly last summer, went to 2050, came back underneath it, went down in the 16s. Now we're back in 1750-ish range. And, you know, we're, we're, gonna, we're, we're fighting to get through that 1900 permanently and then 2000. And then and once we do that, it's going to take off like a scalded dog. I mean, it's just going to be, you know, people, the, the inflation trade is going to be on and it's going to be something to behold. So it's going it's to feel like last summer felt. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're not quite there yet. I mean, there's still... A lot of people, you know, haven't figured out where inflation is. There's, you know, there are people saying deflation will return and it's been a deflationary world and so forth. So I think it's going to take, you know, a little bit more of beating investors over the head. And, and it's very common for people to invest in the rearview mirror. I mean, you know, look, the deflation trade has worked for 40 years, you know, since 1980. But you're seeing, and it's so funny, you're seeing all these mirror images of things changing in 1980. I mean, I remember 1981. You know, Reagan broke PATCO, which was the air traffic controllers union, you know, basically fired them all and hired new guys. And, you know, that was the beginning of the downturn of unions and union pricing power and the power of labor and everything else. And, you know, just recently I read that John Deere, you know, the entire the entire company went out and they're not going back until they get better, better living wages. The whole country's watching them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you're you're gonna see a trend. I mean. This 40 years of deflation benefited, you know, uh, Wall Street versus Main Street. And I, I think that's I think that's changing. I think, I think Main Street's so angry. And 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 by the way, there are job shortages so that, you know, Wall Street and these companies are going to have to pay people more. They just have to. And, you know, higher inflation is going to cost them more to live. They're going to demand higher wages. I mean, you know, that's the thing. When you get into an inflationary environment, it's a cyclical thing. It's, it's a cycle and it has a it has a psychological point to it. I mean, you buy things that you may not even need because you know they'll be more expensive in the future, which increases demand for those things, which then increases price for those things, which then increases inflation, right? So it's like, it's a, it's a terrible, vicious circle. 
and it can happen. And it, I saw it happen. I mean, in the seventies, I remember my parents would buy a used car or new car and could sell it used or trade it in used and get more credit for it than what they paid to buy it. Of course, the new car they were buying cost even more. <laughs> but, but the point is, you know, when, since when have, have cars, used cars actually gone up to values over and above their sticker price? I mean, that, that only happens in a highly inflationary environment. You're seeing it now. Larry, you, you mentioned the, the energy input cost of, of Bitcoin and of gold. And with oil nearing multi-year highs here, is, is this going to continue to exacerbate the raw costs of everything for, to, to keep I think it is. And I think, I think it's interesting that you mentioned energy because I'm, I'm, I'm more and more as I read and study, I'm coming to believe that energy, that money really is just energy. I mean, you know, everything that's energy related is measured in money and everything that's money is kind of measured in energy. And so, you know, arguably even oil could be a good form of money. I mean, it, it has its issues. But the point is that, you know, gold is the stored energy that it takes to mine it. You know, Bitcoin is the energy it takes to keep the network running. Oil is the energy that runs the world. And, um, you know, one thing I will point out, though, I know one of the knocks on Bitcoin is that it absorbs way too much energy. And I, I think that's a I think that's a false uh, a false criticism because I've I've seen studies. Nick Carter's done some great work on this that show that Bitcoin consumes about four tenths, maybe a half a percent of global U of global electricity. And so you know, you ask yourself, well, is is it worth it to have a sound form of money? Is is, a, is it worth a half a percent of electrical costs worldwide to have a sound form of money? I would say the answer is yes. And we, you and I were talking beforehand. I have not done the math, but I will do it. I'll bet we spend more than that mining gold today, more than half a percent. And I know we were talking about this as well. I know the U.S. military consumes one percent of the oil consumed every year, every day, worldwide. And I'm pretty sure that's more than half a percent of the energy in the world. So, so the point is that you know anything that's money, having a sound form of money, is going to consume energy. Banks consume energy. Every business consumes some energy. The issue is. Is, is that energy being used well? And I think in the case of Bitcoin, as in the case of gold, it is being used well because it's creating sound money. You know, the energy that's not being used well are the, you know, 20,000 people that work for the Federal Reserve. I don't know how they need 20,000 people, you know, to, I mean, they need one guy to push the print button. That's it. That ought to do it. 